Okay, so have you ever been kicked out of an HQ during the summer? Once. Um, we had this HQ in uh, Colorado, and we found it through a book guy that sold books. He had a friend, and we stayed at his mom's place. And the deal was that we had to, uh, we paid, I think, like 50 or 100 per week. And uh, I wanted to negotiate the price. But after like a week, a week time, uh, she was like, hey, it's either going to be 100 a week or 150 a week. And she wanted to bump the price. So we ended up uh, having to move out and restructure the whole thing. And that was like what week? Um, number one or two. Okay. It so that's 2021 summer. Okay, so it's pretty early in the summer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like week eight, you come home and your stuff's outside. No, my stuff has never been out. It was just more of, uh, you know, hey, we're not uh, we're not happy with this because I initially told her that we're going to stay there for uh, only like a week. And then I tried to rene renegotiate the price because I was leaving the HQ uh, and then Angel had to stay in that one. And she still wanted the full amount, which was like 200 per uh, Did you live with Angel like every summer? No. No? Okay. Um, or for for a little bit, not for the whole summer. Mm -hmm. Mainly we were like spread around the US. Got it. Yeah, I did. A, I think it was, I still remember it was week eight, uh, my fifth summer. And I still remember it was a 337 unit day because it was like my second 300 unit day. I never, until my sixth summer, I never had these like kind of big days. It was always like, I don't know, 200, so whatever it was. And then I come home. <clears throat> somebody was following me that night as well. Uh, and I come home, it's like 11 PM and all of my stuff is just outside on the lawn. Mm. And my roommate is just on the lawn. He's like, he's lost. He doesn't know what to do. And the landlord decided just, she didn't want us there anymore. And the house lights were off. Nobody was home yeah. and all our stuff was outside. And so like, it was like 11 PM and we had to find a, a place to live. At least you don't have, you probably didn't have as much stuff as you normally have. So There's like nothing. Six shirts and <laughs> yeah, it was just like four, four uh, shorts. Well, in, in fact, the way that I sold, um, I did the, I think it was the Dave Brown thing where he, he taught me this, where he had the same outfit or he had the same outfit for every day of the week. Mm. So he had like his Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through Saturday shirts, all the same. And so uh, before each summer I would go out and I'd buy six of the same polos. Same same color or no? No, it was different. I had, a blue, polo, I had, different I had a blue, a green, a pink, a yellow. Uh, so just like some different like soft pastel color polos. And then I buy, uh, I think, three or four pairs of shorts and they were all exactly the same. Um, and so, yeah, I just had my polos like outside. Uh, yeah, I was doing this like similar thing. Um, you know, you'd have every day of the week would be a specific color until you ruin the shirt and you have to change it for something else. But for, for the longest time, I was like very superstitious and terms of like, oh, I have to have like these pair of socks for Saturday for like the big day, mm. or you have uh, to have like, you know, everything lined up in a perfect place until the time where, you know, everything was still working and I was still producing a lot when things weren't as they were before. Like I wasn't having my blue shirt on a Monday and mm. I still had a great day. And then I wasn't having my pink one on Wednesday and still rocked the whole day or um, but imagine how much you would have sold if you did have it. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess with, with time, I was just kind of being able to differentiate like the superstition or, you know, you find your, uh, like a lucky coin and you don't want to get rid of it. And, but then it was never the lucky coin in the first place. That makes sense. So you said Saturday preparing for the big day. Did you find your Saturdays, you tended to sell more than other days? Usually. You did? Yeah. For, for, okay. for the most part, because it was just, uh, for me, it was like a whole day, big gravy, like just... Um, I, many Saturdays I, I had just, I didn't have that big of a plan mm -hmm. ra rather than, you know, mapping the whole town. And I was just starting from one point and just going through like every single prospect's house, just yep. driving around, blasting music. And just, you know, Saturday is like the, the craziest day that you can kind of never predict. And it was just like, who's going to be there? Okay. I don't think I had that. Um, cause I, I tended to work, you know, I tended to work pretty big brick. Mm-hmm. And nobody in Big Brick is nine to five. Like I remember my first summer, like when it's just like middle class and, you know, 5, 30, 6 p.m. You hear forks clinging down the street because everybody's sitting down for dinner. They're like in the matrix. Yeah. But Big Brick was different. You know, you're getting like surgeons and lawyers and pilots and just people like business owners. They're, they could be home at 1 p.m. and they could be home at 10 p.m. Like you never know. And so for me, Saturdays were like every other day of the week, like to the point to the point where I just kind of thought, you know what, like every day Saturday, but, but have you ever gone and sold on a Sunday? Many times. Yeah. yeah really? Actually, Tell mm -hmm. me about that. 
Um, well, it was it was a mix because there were many people that I wasn't able to catch during the week. That was just uh, hard to catch. And then on... Um, and so you did this after the Sunday meeting or you just didn't go to the Sunday meeting? Didn't have Sunday meetings. Okay. Because uh, I was just by myself for, for the last couple of summers. Okay. Yeah. Literally living by yourself. All the time, yeah. Just okay. just me and nobody. And we were me and Angel were constantly uh, talking on the phone, like morning, e- evening, and then with uh, Emil and Dennis Laff, just my buddies and I would friends. have just lost my freaking mind. It's, uh, it's oh my, I got used to it. That I sounds guess. like hell. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I know you sold a, a crap load of books, but like when I die and go to hell, I think I'll be living alone, selling books by <laughs> myself, just waking up every morning. Like I just, that sounds frightening. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I guess I got used to it and I wasn't... I was by myself physically, but I wasn't by myself, uh, you know, emotionally. Just because you had a volleyball named Wilson, and you talked <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I had a little pet in my car. No, uh, but you know, my girlfriend was um, was always with me, and uh, and and my friends. You know, I was just constantly exchanging ideas and sharing ideas, what works, what doesn't, sharing situations that we went through, and I, I feel like the, the whole organization was able to. Um, we had a, you know, laughing call, uh, with Dennis, who is like a, a, another stud in the book field. Uh, anybody who sold obviously knows him. And uh, we joked and every Sunday we had this, or most Sundays we had this call where it was like a patch Sunday. So it's like a, so what new did you discover? What, what did you figure out? Any new trick in the book mm. that we, we start to implement. And it was very interesting because, um, you know, you talk to anybody who doesn't produce as much as you, mm-hmm. I f- you feel that they're like, you know, five, five blocks away and they're just not picking it up still. But you talk to the highest producers and you guys are on the same wavelength and anything you share clicks, they've experienced it and they have something else to share. Mm. Or it's always just a contribution of ideas. So selling time. Sunday, did you find it was more like a Saturday or more like something it, else? Yeah. Um, it, it, f- f- you know, it's, um, I feel like the more I understood uh, the selling part is the, I, I understood that, you know, selling of itself is uh, not the hardest thing. It's rather catching people at home. Right. And, yeah. and putting yourself in front of enough people because when you get to um, a good enough prospect where yes. they can make a decision, yeah. it's not really a question if am I going to sell them, but it's rather than, okay, well, how many of those situations can I put myself in a, in a day. Yeah. Um, and uh, s- sometimes a Monday would be a huge day or sometimes a Monday could be like one client and I save the day with like 100 units mm. uh, or whatever. So it's, um, you know, a matter of, and what we spoke, um, you know, privately, the, the pool that you have to pick from and it's just how big your pool is. And then there comes the next question of your credibility and then your uh, status in the town. Mm. And your, uh, you know, how uh, respected you are, because the more respect you have, and the more recognizable that you are, that your pool automatically gets bigger because right. more people want to interact with you, right. and be around you. Yeah, like you come to the door, and sometimes they're already like, "Oh yeah, I heard about you from like oh, this yeah. mom, whatever." Yeah, or, or I've seen, or I read about you on Facebook, or mm. I saw the town post <laughs> about you. Uh, come on in, like I, I'm curious to to learn about your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so that that automatically just makes. Instead of, let's say, like, you know, 50 people want to talk to you in the town, it's like 85 just because right, right. you've done the right steps before. And then you put the little skill uh, on top of it and just becomes like 150 people. Mm. And then it takes you longer to go through the town. Um, and then it just increases the whole um, volume of people that you can talk to. I've probably only ever talked to one or two people that sold that are like, yeah, you know, when you come to the door and they're like, ah, oh, you're finally here. And uh, that that happened a few times, and then I I would bring it up, and people are like, "What?" And again, and I think that's there's probably a little bit more propensity for that now because there is just much more social media. True. Um, I had MySpace was the first thing when I was still selling, and <laughs> no, but I would have like the kids add me on MySpace, and I started experiencing a little bit that towards the end of my summers, like, "Oh yeah, we heard like MySpace, whatever," and then it became Facebook, but. Even then, you know, I got, <clears throat> I signed up for Facebook in 08 and it was, and I remember it was 08 cause it was so new and I kind of resisted it for about a year before mm. that it was only open to certain schools. Yeah. Uh, and that was my last summer. So, um, but I can understand that, you know, that's a fire that can burn both directions. Right. Like I was going to say it's yeah. a, it's a sweat, uh, a sword with two edges or yeah. uh, as they say, because, um, you know, I've had many times where I feel 
like I'm doing the right things all the time. Yeah. But sometimes my emotions would get the best of me and I would um, act a little bit more snobby with someone or a little bit more disrespectful or mm. a little quick to, to quick to respond mm. uh, and I'd be uh, or make a bad comment where it will it would uh, leave a bad taste in people's mouth and they'll go to Facebook. And mm. then, you know, and, and then you may do it like three, four times and nobody says anything. Yeah. But then you, uh, you get a, uh, a Karen uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. just gets angry for no reason yeah. and puts out a comment and then everybody's like, oh, well, I guess if she hates on that guy, like I can hate on him too. And then people just sh share their experiences that they've had and maybe it wasn't that pleasant sometimes because mm. I may have pushed them a little bit more until I, uh, kind of know where the boundaries are and you know learning the boundary you're gonna cr you're gonna hit the wall a few times and or go through it and uh, I've had many times where people would be extremely negative at the door and kind of pushing me away of the town be because of it but thanks to those experiences I've, I've kind of yet I've, I've been able to find where the boundaries are and the limits to the door-to-door -door business yeah well in, in respect in retrospect to my comment I think I'm very much happy that I didn't have the proliferation <laughs> of social media while I sold. I had yeah. a, I've, I've definitely like, you know, what's funny is I was, I kind of had this thing where like I sold fairly high income, right? And so the propensity for getting blue lighted is definitely higher in high income areas. Like it's a fact because they're just more skeptical, right? And especially my second summer where, where I was selling like $20 million homes, which I was in no way emotionally prepared for, still sold like some crazy famous people. Um, <clears throat> But I'd have the cops called on me every day because I'm driving a beat up 88 Corolla. And in that neighborhood, it's just like, you know, or a gated community. How did you get in that kind of stuff? Right. But I learned how to deal with that. And then, and then by my, I guess it would be my fourth and fifth summers. I kind of got into the reverse blue light award where you call a police on a Karen. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually did that a couple of times. <laughs> we, how, I'm how like, Hey, like, no, literally like, I'd be like, Hey, like I'm out here working and uh, there's a woman that's like following me around harassing me. Mm. And she lives at this house and I can't go on the street. Like she's harassing me at work. Yeah. I'm, Can you like, like I'm, I don't know if I'm physically safe. Can you please send somebody out? And like, I literally a couple of times, uh, like called the cops on a mom just, just, and it was just like, I don't care. Reverse blue light. Like, you know, at this point, at this point, you know, whatever. It's, it's obviously quite cheeky, but like, yeah, I was crushing it that summer. So I'm like, I'm like, whatever. I'll just call the cops on you first. I've only done it once <laughs> where I called the cops because, uh, it was, I think it's the, or oh, it's not the only one, but. I think it's the second time a dog bit me mm. and it was the <laughs> same dog. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. It's like same dog. And what's weird, different summers, different part of the country. Are you following in Bulgaria <laughs> and then following? in England and then in the U S <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and the dog just jumped over the fence mm. and, uh, came straight at me. I'm, I'm no, you know, expert of dogs. So I was just trying to, uh, defend myself with yeah. my, uh, folder and my iPad. <laughs> so, so he, yeah. And th the worst thing is, and I learned that you never do it is you put both of your, uh, strings of the backpack on you. Oh, they pull you down by the backpack. Uh, no, no, no. So no. I, I was with both of my, uh, so I put my back on, uh, backpack full on Yeah. and I didn't, I wasn't able to get it out fast enough. Ah. So I only had my folder in my iPad and in, um, in panic, I threw my iPad in the dog's mouth. It was like barking at me like, yeah. real crazy, like wanting to bite me. Uh, and then I threw my folder and I was like stepping backwards trying to get my backpack and uh, it got my finger. Oh no. A just a little bit, but enough to kind of get my... Uh, so you called the cops? Adrenaline. I called, because well, I wasn't sure if the dog was <clears throat> fine because the house definitely, it looked very sketchy. Okay. And the lady just got her dog and she went inside. She just shut herself down and I was like, well, aren't you going to just offer me a napkin or something? Like, just tell yeah, me yeah, the yeah. dog is safe. And I was just, wasn't sure, well, do I have to go to the hospital? Now? Like, get my, like, some type of shots against rabies and things like that. So I called the cops and they're like, oh, she said the dog is fine, but she doesn't really have the papers. And I was like, well, I don't have the time to, like, I'll just. So you just, you just risked rabies and went forward with it. Uh, yeah. So was that, that, was that your secret? How you sold so many books? You showed up rabbit at the door. <laughs> I'm Peter. I just want to sell you some food. And they're like, dude, give him the money. Give him the money. That's the yeah. secret, right? That's, the, the, <laughs> yeah. When, when there's no other chance, you go. You know, yeah. You just rabies. go full rabies mode. <laughs> like straight up rabies. On him. That's funny. Um, I got chased by a coyote once on the book field. I've, I've. <laughs> Coyotes, I have never had that. 
Uh, it looks I, like a dog, but like very like I'm like why is I'm like why does that dog look so like a poor? Dog and a fox. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Like my thought was why does that dog look so poor? Like that's I was like that that looks like it just looks like a what a dog would look like if it was like really broken homeless. He was like what? like this. I'm like that dog looks poor, and I'm in the middle of a field. Like I took a wrong turn on my bicycle or something. It was my first summer, and you were with a bike, so. And then it kind of hit me. I'm like, oh crap! This is not a poor dog. It's a coyote, yeah. which is actually kind of is a poor dog when you think about it. Like, mm. and then I just booked it, man. I was just I was flying so fast, and this thing was like, I'm like run. <laughs> yeah, I've jumped many fences because of dogs because uh, I just didn't want to test it. Mm. I'm no expert of dogs, so. I'd rather be on the other side of the fence. You were telling me a story earlier, maybe a few weeks ago, but it was about like you made a sale and it was like three or four or 500 units or some crazy like grandma that just kept buying books. How, how many units was that one sale? Um, I don't know the like the exact amount, but I think it was like 430 to like 450 uh, units mm. was that one. That's some people's summers. S sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was on a Sunday. That was your biggest sale. Ever, yeah. Okay. Single. Yeah. Single biggest sale. Mm -hmm. What about second biggest sale? Do you remember? Um, it was a uh, it was a grandma that referred me to that grandma. Oh no way! Yeah. Uh, oh, that's got, there's a story in that. See, like yeah. there's a there's something to keep right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, I think two hundred and fifty <laughs> or like three hundred units, something like that. Yeah, that's see, we didn't like that's really interesting to me because like obviously, I mean obviously to anybody from my vintage, like we never talked to grandparents. So it was yeah. like it just wasn't a thing. I, and you're out there selling grandmas like crazy. <clears throat> yes. And I feel like if I was to calculate my units, I definitely would have like at least 25 to 30% of my units going to grandmas. Mm. Uh, if not more, but uh, just let's say that would be like 25, 30%. Was it different it. psychologically selling to a grandma? Like did, um, you just have, did you have to be like way friendlier and like, I feel more like, like I'm just a kid, man. Well, it, it was again, um, the boy at sword because uh, it, there's hundreds of grandmas in turf yeah and most of them would actually waste your time way more than those okay you know, just yap and yap yeah then you'd be able to sell okay them. gerda like i must go now <laughs> yeah i don't care about world war ii <laughs> yeah world, uh, i don't care about the great depression gerda <laughs> so it was um it was I found that that was like the hardest thing for everybody. And that's why everybody uh, tended to skip or to whoever I spoke to, yeah. um, tended to skip uh, grandparents because they just gotten the experience of wasting their time so many times with them that they kind of just shut them off. Right, right. And uh, I, I guess just harder trial close questions and just being really friendly kid and understanding where they come from. Because um, I spent a um, couple of years with my grandma she lived it, uh, with me before uh, she passed away. And um, she was just looking for a company. She was she was always looking for with somebody, somebody to chit chat. She didn't mm. have too many mm. friends. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Con sometimes, you know, she had a, a couple of friends of hers where she would talk with them on the phone. And I just really was able to resonate because they're constantly, m most of grandparents are constantly just kind of sitting by themselves or with their partner at home, nothing crazy happening. And you get a friendly college kid from Bulgaria from the other side of the world. Right. And they're like, who's that guy? Let's and waste his time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get him. <laughs> Let's get him. Uh, and, Let's get him, Frank. <laughs> yes, Ingrid. <laughs> Welcome to your lemonade. <laughs> and then... Um, uh, Let me just go ahead and grow the lemons while you wait. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and then they'll just uh, want to be part of your story. And I just really transparently shared with them that, uh, you know, buying books for me will help me in my endeavors and mm. my, um, you know, my adventure. Yeah. And um, and it obviously helped them because, you know, Karen, you know, uh, they're not a Karen. So, like, you would use Barbara. <laughs> like Barbara that's, that's a good grandma name, Barbara. Yeah. And Debbie. Debbie. Well, yeah. Because that I, was, I, the, yeah, Debbie for sure. Debbie. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Debbie, you're definitely going to get your your grandparents some presents. Like, why just not get them now from me? Mm -hmm, you get mm -hmm. to help me. Mm -hmm. And then you get to uh, have some uh, fun, cool things for them. And you can give them all at once or you can spread them out through multiple right, right. occasions. And the nicest thing is, like, when you buy them from a big store, uh, you don't really know who who you're supporting. It's, it's a random guy in China or whatever. Um, <laughs> Some Chinese guy that writes all the books yeah. <laughs> in or, a basement. Or, Come and, on, kids. And, make, <laughs> and makes all the toys. Yeah, and the Koreans draw the cartoons. We know how this works. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> or you get you can literally just do it now. And yeah. you've met me. You know my story. You know you know um, 
where I'm going and where I'm headed and what yeah. I'm excited for. And they just really, and that was like, uh, the interesting thing is with uh, trying it so many times, I found that that's like my best reclose with for grandparents because out one grandma was getting two sets out of three for the kids' books. And uh, I try to explain, well, the Explore and Learn has uh, projects that they can do. And then it has posters and it thicker pages and, it, it you know, uh, more, uh, you know, harder level of reading for them to um, to develop themselves. And I every single reason to buy, I was like saying, and she didn't click. And she was like, no, I'm good with those two. I'm good with those mm -hmm. two. And I just said, like, Debbie, look, if you're going to get the third one, you will help me more. And then, uh, you know, it, it would help me in um, any way that you can imagine. I would make more money and then it will help me with my college. Did you guys still have the My Fun With Words? Yeah. Are the words of elder abuse in there? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Debbie, listen. Debbie, listen. Be between you and I, between yeah. you and I, you are going to die very soon. <laughs> might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but you know. But the legacy that you leave behind when you buy these books for my future and also your shitty grandkids, but whatever, mostly my future, the <laughs> legacy. Think about the legacy, Debbie. Yeah. So many of them are that's, very uh, That's going right in the sales 101. The legacy. Right You're going to die soon. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Used in a special occasion. <clears throat> I have never sold a grandparent ever. Um, but again, I, like, I think, I think, um, well, you know, part, part of it too, and I can see like, even if other people are selling grandparents and really there wasn't anybody, maybe one girl I think had some grandma clients, but I think, I think what happened was, again, what you said is there, you get a couple of sit downs with grandparents early on because you know, you're a rookie and you're a clown and you think that's a mom, but it's a grandma. And after like two hours with her, you understand she has no kids. We've all been trapped in that little lie, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, like you don't have kids. Why am I here? <laughs> you know, she doesn't well, and you, look your, your, you look at your watch 40 minutes. Like, fast back. Darn. Yeah. But, but then, because it was easy to get sit downs. And so then you, but then you didn't get a lot of sit downs. So they were pleasant. But when you get good at getting sit downs, then you also start to understand the non buying signs and when you should leave. So I think, you know, if that had been introduced later towards some of our careers where it's like, okay, I can do this, but I also know that I time all my sit downs. And Matt Atchison did this when he sold books. He had a four minute timer. He would put an actually the alarm would go off. Mm -hmm. And so I stole that. I had a four minute timer. I'm like, oh, four minutes is up. Are you still with me or should I go? Yeah. You know, and it was a lot of that. And maybe with a grandma. Yeah, I don't know. Four minutes is up, Debbie. Time to take your pills. <laughs> Wait, I was just starting. To <laughs> Time to get your pills, Debbie. Um, that's a that's a fantastic story. Okay, let's uh, let's go to this one real quick. Do you have like a just insane book field story? Just a crazy wild book field story? I probably do. Uh, I always get to uh, forget them. Um, like you ran over a cat, and then the family felt sad, and they had to buy books because the cat was dead. That's not my story, but that is definitely somebody's, somebody's story. story no, there. I know somebody that literally ran over the cat. And then got scared, drove off, and then came back in the evening. And then the kids are all sad because the cat was dead. And then the parents bought books to appease the children's sadness. Okay. <laughs> definitely not you, right? But a good strategy. <laughs> definitely not me, but a good strategy. <laughs> I'm just saying, if somebody if somebody wanted to like to to weaponize that, it could work. Um, I feel like my my craziest stories were just in all around how my summers went being from town to town especially towards the end, being from town to town. And uh, I really focused on anything that it's about selling the product rather than, you know, getting the craziest uh, uh, story. Obviously, I've had people, for some reason, coming out naked um, to open the door. Okay. Um, mostly guys. Um, I've never had that, but I've heard people saying that dudes will just open the door completely in the nude. Yeah, never had a, a lady. Did they not naked, think? Well, where were you? Like, where are people naked in their it house? It was a, it was a great neighborhood, big houses. You know, this uh, suburb, and just the guy opened up the door completely naked. He was like, "Hey, I can I help you?" But, I felt he felt good about himself. You know, being able to open naked. Well, but what is the goal? Like, you are you not self aware enough that you're completely in the nude and you're about to get arrested? Like, you could be a teenager that's underage. That could be a good reason to call the cops again. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, no, I, but but at that point I was just like, okay, that happened. But let me go to the. Were next they already? Door. Do you think they were naked before you knocked the door? Do yeah. you think they saw you and then just stripped down and ran to the door? <laughs> I feel like naked before. You think so? Do you think there was ever a situation where they weren't and then they just stripped down to meet you? Like, I haven't had it so many times where I could kind of. Uh, you don't know. Tell you. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> and then Never do you seen. just continue to approach them like, hey, are you the? Nah. It was so. It was so weird. That, you know, I right, obviously, obviously kept eye contact, but 
Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 don't look down. You have really, really strong eye contact. Yeah, like I didn't even notice. What are you yeah. talking about? What? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you want to grab a seat? <laughs> yeah, and then you know, and then you go, and the guy's just like next door. Yeah, that's Naked Steve. Did you go there? Don't go there. Yeah. Don't go to Naked Steve. Yeah, I've done that already. <laughs> um, yeah. But if it, again, so it was very weird because on a Sunday, everybody would have the craziest stories. And I'd be like, does anything happen to me other than that I, I sell a bunch? Because I feel like I was just kind of um, asking from the universe, if, if, if you even call it, um, you know, that I was just focused on only about selling. And, yeah. you know, anything crazy that have happened, I remember it uh, on the moment. I just, you know, laugh about it. I even started to write down some stories because uh, I would forget them so often. Uh, but for me, everything was just how do I get to the next house? How do I sell this? How do I connect to those two? It wasn't too much of great. I mean, my fun memories was like selling situations that were not supposed to be sold, and yeah, okay, and um, and selling amounts that were not supposed to be sold mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, sure. No, I think I think from my experience, a lot of us experience the craziest stuff really in our first summer. And, because the crazy stories don't just, it's, it doesn't go zero to a hundred very, very often. It usually goes like zero, 20, 40, and you catch the signs, right? Yeah. But when you're kind of like your common sense sucks and you're young, you just, you, you just miss the red flags and you just keep, the story just gets crazier and crazier. Mm -hmm. Like you should have stopped that story at step two, not at step nine. Yeah. You know? And so the stupidity, the stupidity of just being young contributes a lot. Like, Again, I got chased by a coyote. I was in the middle of a field at night because, like, I didn't have a map on me, and I was selling books like without a map. And uh, and so I ended up like just making a turn and going through a field, and it's like 10 p.m. and I'm in the you know pretty dark field in front of a coyote. Like, probably should have had a brain on me before that, you know? Yeah, not the smartest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so a crazy story is that I've been, uh, I had a couple of sit downs where. One time I just really didn't understand why he wanted to kick me out of the house because we were about to, I went into the house. It was, again, a nice uh, suburb, a uh, big two-story house. And when in, the dad was super chill. And uh, you, when you walk in to the left, there was a table tennis. And I was like, cool, do you, do you guys play? I, I, I'll definitely beat all of you, uh, all, always. Uh, Good rapport and, builder. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then I think we even played for a couple of hands. And I was like, hey, let me show you what it what you know, what the books are, and then we can uh, do a one game. And while I was explaining, I feel like he was the type of a driver and he asked me some type of a question. I was like, well, I'll get to that, but let me just make sure that you know all this that I'm t talking about now. And then like in, within a minute, he was like, pack your stuff and go. And I was like, was, you know, Raymond, what? And he was like, no, no, pack your stuff and go. Mm -hmm. And I was like, started to pack and he started to yell. And I was like, what the heck was that guy, you know, <clears throat> made? Yeah. And so it was, I think it was my first or second summer. So maybe I just- You misread the situation. Misread yeah, like you, you misread completely. the signs that the, 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 yeah, we do that. We like, I, even now when we do sales, like you kind of have that propensity and I do as well, right? Like on the phone, we, we did a couple of times where it's like, you're not recognizing the guys like the escalating pattern, yeah. in anger. And then you kind of piss them off and you're like, what just happened? But that that's the kind of intuition you develop from yeah. years and years of selling the, you know, and being in the situation you're in, right? Yeah. And, or one time I had this where I went into a house. So first of all, it was a crazy situation where it was like 940 o'clock and I had an appointment with one mom, but she was being late. Mm -hmm. And so I had the, the kid call her because uh, she it was a single mom. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I'm being like 30 minutes away. If you want, you can wait for me. If not, we can arrange another time. And I've already tried to catch uh, the mom a couple of times. So yeah. I was like, well, I'm just going to wait for you. And I had new puppies. So I grabbed the puppy and I just waited in the car, like petted yeah. the puppy for like 30 minutes. And it was like 10, 10 something. She comes back exhausted, tired, but she was like, okay, come on in. Yeah. And I went in and I feel like, I, I guess I was just kind of tired at the end of the day. It was like a long day. And we started to have a, the sit down and the kids were like a couple of kids, like four or five kids running around. One were, you know, playing, being loud. The other one at the table wasn't really focused. And at that time, I... I Strictly remember it because I lost my control in a way of I started to direct the kids if if I was the dad. Mm. I was like, hey, could you like guys like, be quiet for a little bit? And like, could you do this? And could you do that? And uh, she got really mad and she was like, you know, uh, who are you to talk to my kids like that or something? And uh, she was. She and then you looked and you said, Lucy, this is why you're single. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. And she kicked me out. And okay. then I felt really bad about it. Like wrote her a, an apology, uh, you know, letter or, you know, card. Mm -hmm. left it. Um, and, and, you know, whenever I wanted to say something to a kid, I was like, uh, 
you know, squeeze my tongue so I can be like, it's not, not your okay. kids, you cannot control. Uh, and I just learned how to go into the house and be able to give directions and, or, and quote unquote orders without being as a, um, you know, a Mussolini. Right, right. And I would just be like, hey, I've done this so many times. I have short hands. If you might come here, I'll just put I'm a couple short. chairs. <laughs> I have, you got to say I have short Bulgarian hands. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I'll just put everybody around me for like three seconds and you'd set up the whole thing. <laughs> Look, I have. That's why our. That's why that that that's why our salamis are so long. <laughs> um, I, had a, I just reminded to my. I'll tell you one. Uh, it was my first summer. It was my first week. Mm. It was on the f- one of the first streets I ever sold. Might have been the first street I ever sold. And uh, <clears throat> I came late to sales school. I, I had a short eight week summer. I came so I came week five of the summer for the rest. So I kind of trained with like some French kids at the time. There was a nice French division. Those kids, I don't know how many of them finished, man. Like most of them spoke no English at all. <laughs> um, yeah, some of them did. But but anyway, so so I get like through sales school, fine. I go sell. And for whatever reason, like I didn't, my student manager was Amy Brock Devine. She was the one that recruited me to yeah. sell books. And she she was already selling. So there was nobody like to really sit next to me in sales school and like guide me, which is fine. Like I still had a great sales school. But when I got out there, A, I didn't have a street map because nobody told me like I'll need a street map. Like I didn't even consider that, right? Like again, I'm just stepping out of like out of the matrix into this thing. And it's like, okay, so I'm on this street now. It was Bear Brook Drive in, in Ottawa was my first street, Bear Brook. And, uh, and my first door I knocked on, I ended up buying some books. So I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. But because I had no map, well, not me because I had no map, maybe because <laughs> maybe the root cause of that is something a little more, more uh, inept based. But I also, when I wrote down the names of the streets on my notepad, because we had notepads, mm-hmm. I didn't actually write the real name of the street. Oh, So for example, Bear Brook Lane was like, like green tree crescent. Like I would just make up, I know it sounds preposterous. <laughs> I would make up names because I didn't even think like a week into the future that I'd have no idea where the hell I am. Because you're just embedded inside your turf, you know, you're so yeah. entrenched in it, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, it didn't take me long to figure this out. It took me about a week. So I have like, I remember one street was like Money Banks Drive because it looked rich. I'm like, Money Banks. <laughs> so then, you know, so then, so then I'm on a street. I'm like, Money Banks. I'm like, is this Money Banks or is this green tree? Yeah. This yellow, yellow leaf? Like what, what, what street am I on? Because, you know, the street numbers 246A, 24, whatever, they're all the same street numbers. I have no clue what street I'm on. So you understand what's going to happen is I'm going to end up knocking on some of the same doors. Well, yeah, which, 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 so I remember it was, it was, I think it was like my third day or my second or third day and I knock on a door and uh, this mom answers and I use the term mom quite loosely because she was a fairly corpulent, short haired woman with glasses. Like imagine a Karen and that's what she looked like. That is like, she looked like what, like at the time we didn't have the terminology of a, that, but that was like a pre Karen. Yeah. That was like the Karen of like the, uh, you know, the dinosaur era <laughs> and she opens the door and I start like doing my approach. She's like, get off my property, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, let me just show you what I'm doing. And she's like, I work for the school. And she's like, get the hell off my property. Like, she was just very, very obnoxious, right? Um, I assume she was hungry. Was, cause she was fat. Anyway, so uh, I, I leave and uh, you know I, I continue through my day, but then gravy time hits and I'm back on Green Tree Crescent or something. I have no clue what street I'm on. And I'm knocking on doors. I'm like, oh, these houses look familiar, but whatever, you know, other houses. I knock on the door and guess who answers? The same one? No, a different one. I'm, oh. A man answers. Okay. And I see how this is going. And he's very nice. He's like, oh, come in. Like, for sure. Like, I, you know, my wife works for the schools. We're really big into education. My red flags are not going off yet. I get inside and we're like this with the dad and the son. He's about 13 years old. Yeah. And I'm doing my demo and the kid is like, these are great. Like, I'll definitely use this. I think it's great. And so the dad gets out his checkbook and starts writing me a $300 check. He's like, cool, let's do it. And then the garage door starts open and I can hear it. It's a one story house, you know, and the dad's like, oh, my wife is home. She's going to love this. And, uh, and then, uh, so I just, I'm not even clicking in. I'm like, cool. I, Cause I've never even been in a situation where like a parent comes home midway through a check handoff. Yeah. Like, like I'd never, like we of course all experienced that in our lives, but at the time it was my first. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm like sitting there chatting with daddy's writing a check and I hear behind me. Doof, doof. And what it was is she, the, this, uh, Karen came home with two shopping bags from the store, grocery yeah. store. And she was like, doof, doof. And then I see the dad look up and his face is just like, I'm like, what's happening? I turn around and it's, and she's looking straight at me. Oh my God. Oh no. And then, and then she's just like livid. 
And then the husband's like, oh, hey, this young man here selling some books. And she's like, get the out of my house. <laughs> and the dad and the son are like, their eyes are like, what the hell is going on? Like, they're just frightened, right? And um, the thing about their house is they had like a couch here and, and there was a very big window, like one window where you can like look outside. Um, but you could open it, like you could slide it, I guess, like, like a, not like a sliding door, but like one of those, like that goes like, mm -hmm. you know, pulls the window open, takes my bag and throws it right out the window. My order books following it, oh. my shoes, like, and so then, and I see the neighbors outside are like talking and they turn around and then this, she's just throwing stuff out the window and I'm scuttling out like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and I'm thinking like, I guess I'm not coming back to this street anymore. <laughs> Go being confident on the next door. Right. I was, uh, I was pretty shaken. I, I assume they got divorced. Like I just, that's, that's, that's kind of like my gratification in the story. <laughs> like, so her life probably an, ended like very lonely. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> for, for me again, going back to the stories, um, just the most exciting part about, about it was, um, getting into houses that, uh, were hard to get to making sales that were quote unquote, like not supposed to happen, mm. uh, where, you know, with skills and communication, I'd be able to proceed and stay long enough in the conversation for them to be like, well, you seem like a competent guy. Like you can just come, come on in. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's talk about our kids' education. I trust you with what you have to say. It was nice where, um, you know, parents would uh, say to the kids, hey, come on in. I want you to listen uh, what he has to say. Or mid, mid sit down, they'll be like, you know, do you see? Like, do you see why it's important? Yeah, the parents and, are trying to sell the kids. Yeah. yeah. And then and how they're on the, on the same side. Because, uh, you know, I was raising... Um, awareness for for the family is just how important education is and you know it's not it's not that it's like the most important thing but it definitely could help uh, just develop your brain and your critical thinking um and and you know why their parents want them to to really just work hard on it now and not be completely lazy and distracted and just have uh tiktok in their hands all the time mm -hmm. and uh, and it was nice when the parents are like, so what, what do you recommend for us to get? Mm -hmm. Or, or you know, for our family, what would you suggest? And for me... I definitely suggest the Mufu. <laughs> That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and yeah, it, it's great memories. And I've, you know, when, when I've connected names that uh, <coughs> with, from multiple towns, because when you stay in one area for a longer time... Uh, you get to know the the state really well. And I've had many people who are like, oh, I moved from this town and I, was, I just go to my folder and have like 17 people, like the biggest, biggest, the, the biggest owners in those towns mm -hmm. and have the biggest owners in this town and the principals and the directors. And they're like, wow, like, you know, everybody. And I'm like, yeah, I've been through the whole state. Like I literally know everybody anywhere. <laughs> mm. Where are you from? Oh, you wouldn't know it. And I actually went horseback riding in Bulgaria with my girlfriend. And the guy was like, I, I worked on a ranch in Montana. And I was like, oh, where? And mm -hmm. he was like, this and you little... dropped names on him, yeah? Yeah, and he was like, oh, you wouldn't know it. It's like 300 person town. Like literally, it's hard to see it on a map. Like you blink and you miss it. And I'm like, oh, so what's the name? And he was like, oh, it's whatever. And I'm like, oh, I've been there. I sold <laughs> like those girls, those guys. And he was like, no way. Like, I've never met anybody mm. that knows the place. So it's just nice to be able to connect with everybody on just different um, different levels. I'll close on this story. So um, my fifth summer I sold in Calgary. And then um, in this business, I started in Calgary. And the uh, craziest thing happened. So I had a, my second or third week, I'm calling through Denton's. Uh, at the time, it was called FMC, obviously a law firm. And booked this guy, John. He comes to our meeting, and I'm selling you know, clothing, right? Mm -hmm. And he smacks down a receipt for the volume library. He's like, I knew it was you. No way. And it was, uh, I sold in Calgary in 07, and this would have been 2010, I want to say. Yeah, late 2010. <laughs> so it would have been a four-year, four years. So like four years isn't like whatever, right? Yeah. Like his kids were still in school. Mm. And he slapped down. He had the receipt. He's like, I slapped. Like, I knew it was you. And he pointed the receipt as my name on it, you know, because he's nice. like, I remember yeah. you. And I remembered him as well. I was like, oh, I remember you now. And uh, yeah, he ended up, uh, you know, his two girls. And when his daughter got married, of course, he, you know, got a suit. Uh, her, the husband, mm -hmm. the husband got a suit from us, which is very cool. And he's been a client for a very long time since, since you know, that first year. Uh, and I've had that experience now several times where, for example, uh, and this is Johnny Gates uh, in Calgary. But I remember we had the same thing with um, a couple of clients in Toronto where I saw a name in the system and I'm like, hey, wait, I, I know this guy. 
Like I remember it very vividly. I sold him books and I wrote to him. It was one of like another big lawyer in Toronto, Kevin. And he's like, I remember you. Yeah, like, cool. Hey, nice to see you. I was like, yeah, this is, this is the company. And he's like, oh, that's funny. And the same thing happened with um, a very, the Mankey's family in Toronto, like we're, um, one of the one of the main guys is a client and i remember that day i remember vividly selling to his wife like vividly how that happened and uh that was a funny sale because it was 54 unit vl health and wellness and tlc and she had the set but it was like five or six years old and this is like one of the nicest neighborhoods of the, this is this family's like really really well known they built skyscrapers and uh, this was like a crazy neighborhood where it's just like you know the homes are like 10 million plus, like very insane. So I like, think Prince lived on that street basically. Like oh. that's, yeah, yeah. So I had a lot of like Matt Sandin had a house there, McGillney had, I, I sold Doug Gilmore on that, like right in that neighborhood. So it was like a very prestigious, well-known yeah. neighborhood called the Bridal Path in Toronto. And, um, and I remember, and she was looking, she's like, yeah, I got these books, but I got them like seven years ago, but my kids are older, but I feel like, she's like, I feel like the books are a little bit like used. I'm like, so you don't use them? She's like, no, we do, but like maybe I should get a new set just so that they look nice. I'm like, yeah. And then she literally bought everything and it was on the account of that the books got some use and she felt like, you know, they were getting a little dirty. Let's get a new set so they look nice. Let's, it was like, you know, when you're stepping into like some real, some real, um, I guess, wealth where like appearance, like you want everything to look very beautiful. And that, and then, um, and then I remember this. And again, this was such a unique experience for me and probably for anybody that ever stepped foot in that kind of turf. As I was talking to one of the other, like very, very top producers, um, and I was like, how do I sell these people? Like, I have tutors, obviously private school, of course, but it's yeah. like tutors, like, oh, like I had a family straight up, like like a tutor from France would come once uh, once for the weekend, every weekend they'd fly in a tutor from France to teach French. And it's insane to me, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. and I remember this client. He was like, yeah, like my daughter's really into French. We wanted a good tutor. Um, we got recommended her. And it's like, he's like, look, the flight round trip was like a thousand bucks at the time. It's like for us, it's like, whatever. Like I want to have the best tutor for her. Why not, you know? Okay, crazy story. And so this other producer, I think, I can't remember who it was, but they're like, yeah, you know what you should do is uh, sell them on the beauty of the books. Like just having a nice it looks hard, good on the like, yeah, like, like, like a nice hardcover encyclopedia set like you would see in a museum. And, uh, and I actually, and I did this. So I'm sitting with this mom and this is 2006. No, 2005. Wrong, 2004. Uh, it's 2004 again, Bridal Path area. I'm sitting with a mom and she's a Swedish mom and she's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. And she lives in like a massive mansion, single mom, by the way, uh, with, with Indian, like dark Indian kids. Mm. And I was referred to her. And there's a, well, the reason I say it is I was referred to her by an Indian lady um, that was also a single mom uh, that also bought. And she was like super cool. And she's like, you should talk to this lady. She's like, I know her ex-husband. And I go, okay. And then she looks at me. She's like, yeah, her ex-husband's very wealthy. You should talk to her. I'm like, okay. And then she's like, no, 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 Dimitri. Her ex-husband was very wealthy. Yeah. I was like, okay, right. Cool. So I go to this house and again, this mom opens the door. She's like 30, but she's just stunning. Like clearly like was like a model or something, right? Massive mansion, you know, a couple of kids. She's like, yeah, come in, you know, very friendly. I show the book. She's like, Oh, she's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if the kids would really use it or not. And I, I think her name was Ellen. I was like, Ellen, um, you know, it's just nice to have a beautiful set of books on the shelf, like, in, you know, in a museum. She's like, yeah, you're right. Like, that would be a nice decoration. Let me, let me get that. So she signs up for a set. And then I had this other trick. I was, again, talking to some of the top producers that touch turf like that. Then you go, but you know, if the kids end up fighting over them, you should probably have another set. And like, she's like, yeah, that's true. And then she Makes signed sense. up for two sets. Again, I don't know why I went to that story, but just like that weird, like, weird money but at the time was so foreign to me i was like what's happening here yeah um yeah whenever whenever i've been able to kind of get close to the quote-unquote like ultra wealthy families like the ones that uh have like the the biggest and the nicest house and they, they take like a month trip to europe right yeah because they're never home in the summer like never. that's what you know sometimes it's their second it's the nicest house you've ever seen but it's their summer home yeah you're like, oh. and you're like oh <laughs> it makes sense <laughs> uh and, and then you sit down with uh with the family and it never uh is about you know how much does it cost never it, yeah. it's never even a well, question we'll use it. Yeah, we we'll, we we'll use it, and do we want to have it in uh, in our home? And I remember one family bought two sets because one of the kids was going to graduate this year. Once wanted to have the the books uh, 
for uh, for the girl to to college. Mm. So they bought a set for the younger kids to to stay at home. They bought a set, and then another family bought two sets so they can have one for the house and one for the summer house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and or to the other thing that you were mentioning, cow. You sold a guy books and then you know custom clothing is. Yeah, um, I lo- I really liked the um, continuing relationship. Sure, sure. And for me, the, my favorite thing was to meet a family, usually grandparents, but sometimes families as well, and meet a family, uh, sell them books. And what I really found is just it builds a lot of trust when they know that you actually sell books and you're you're not like a random kid that walks around the streets. Mm-hmm. And when I asked them that I'm looking for a host family, many um, of them have welcomed me in their home. And spending time with them on a daily basis at night, and then um, sometimes during the weekend we'd have like lunch or dinner or something. And then you get to really create this relationship where, I mean, um, kind of, you know, off and on contact in touch with with those families to this day. And it's the, the warmest thing. I, their things would pop up on Facebook and I'll see their pictures and everything that they're doing. And I really some you know feel to some extent that they're just part of my uh, bigger family and they, they've welcomed me in, in their home they've shared their food with me on their table and um, and you know they're most the, the safest place for them their home they've shared with me where where they've worked hard for it for their entire lives and put everything on uh, on the line as if and I'm just there you know sleeping mostly for free <laughs> uh, and they're just like hey we we like you we trust you and then we we see that you bring nothing but good and we're happy to be part of your journey uh, and, to, and to help you with it so now you owe it to them to be successful in a way they got to see that very much <laughs> um I never did that. I never <clears throat> kept in touch with like people who sold books or whatever. Again, it was pre-social media, so yeah. maybe, maybe that was part of it. But my wife did, and she did because uh, she sold books eight summers, and she did it with postcards. And uh, I remember talk, having this conversation with her about 10 years ago, and I was like, wait, you write postcards to people that books from me? Books from me? She's like, yeah. Like, it was actually right around Christmas time. We were in Estonia with her family, and she's like, yeah, like I, I still like exchanged some postcards. And she's like, yeah, in fact, I just got one, see, for Christmas. And, she, and I'm not making up the story. She opens the postcard. And it's a picture of the family. It was five kids. That's what I remember too. Five kids, doctor, dad. And he's like, dear Trinu, this is like the sister of like the wife, whatever. So I'm sorry to let you know the whole family perished in a private airplane crash. <laughs> and she was like, oh, that's a bad example. Oh, wow. And then we Googled it and it was true. And she's just like, no. I'm like, see, that's why I didn't stay in touch. <laughs> All right, let's end on that. Let's end on that, everybody. Peter, thanks so much. I love book stories. I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more uh, book stories in private. And uh all the time. All the time. Uh, you know, tips and tricks. Nothing so. else. Peace. <laughs> Thank you, Henry.